Din Jaren's blaster from the Mandalore, right? It's a simple build. It's got a couple of techniques I really want to go over. Um, I have everything already printed. It's simple. It's it's it's. I just pulled it off Thingiverse. I'll I'll put the link in the the dupli if I remember. Um, it's not a lot of parts. It's actually quite a small blaster. Um, it's modeled off a of Bergman number no. one, which is a cool little gun. It's a weird round trigger, right? <laughs> which seems odd until you hold it, and it feels it's it's just, just fantastic. This is a cool cool gun. I'm very happy with how it looks. Let me show you how to do it. I'll pull you in, show you all the pieces. We'll go over that real quick. So here are all the pieces, right? Handle, body, blaster. We're gonna put everything together. First thing we're gonna do is do a very light sanding. Um, nothing too serious, because we're just gonna cover everything in body filler once we glue everything together. Um, so we're gonna start by sanding very lightly, and then body filler. I'm not sanding anything smooth. That's crazy. I don't do that. I just want to rough it up a bit. So the super glue's got something to bond to. I have mine, which is the uh, one I printed. Just as a reminder of what I'm doing. The first thing I put together is the uh, rest of this body. The body gets glued together like so. It's just that onto that. So that's where we're going to start. A lot of people use activator and I've said it before and I will say it again I'm not overtly fond of activator I feel the glue has to have time to do what it is that the glue needs to do an activator kind of speeds that up a little bit I should never be in such a rush that I can't hold it for a minute while the glue sets you know This is an interesting blaster. Um, Forgotten Weapons, the channel on YouTube, did a fantastic piece on uh, the Berkman number one. I figure since Mandalorian is now on hiatus, what better time? We can all be ready for it when it comes back on. None of this is difficult. A lot of people think 3D printing is, is way more complicated than it is. It's not. I'm just roughing this up with a little bit of 100 grit. Making sure everything fits properly. If it doesn't, I'm going to cut it until it does. And on that note, I'm going to grab a blade. I'll be right back. A little bit of sanding to get it to fit. A little bit of glue. We just put it on. Line it up. As best we can, at least. Hold it in place. This is just a prop from a show, so if it's a little off, I'm not terribly worried about it. I'm not a big fan of costuming with 3D printed parts, so this will probably just end up on a shelf somewhere. Nifty part of someone's collection. Here Same thing here. You can glue. A little more around there. Line that up. Glue it in place. a lot of waiting in this. Here. 
it was already starting to look like something. Let's rough this up a little bit. Doesn't seem to want to glue. We give it something to glue to. Possible the uh, the PLA is just too smooth. When it did its glass transition, it never transitioned back out. It's always possible. So, a little bit of roughage. Okay, that seemed to glue pretty well. Try this again. Not worried about overspill because, you know, it's a blaster in the Star Wars universe. None of it's supposed to look nice and neat. Put a little here. Keeps wanting to angle sideways. I don't want it to. It's going to do what I want it to. Not what it thinks it wants to. So now we just wait. While we are waiting, there's another bit that goes right here. Not that it's sliding. hammer supposed to fit in here it's kind of rough I'm gonna more than likely fill that up with a uh, glazing putty really wow talk about a good fit well my printer isn't printing as well as it should be and the layers aren't adhering quite strong enough I think it's the filament I'm using. I'm not very happy with it. But, you know, we use what we got. So now we have greebles to add. Oh. Just a couple of discs here and there. not particularly concerned with exact placement. But I don't want it glued to my table. that care for a bit. All right, believe it or not, we are almost done. Make sure that's lined up properly. Excuse me. that care for a bit. Just a couple more pieces and we will be able to move on to finishing. My favorite part. Move the handle on. Yeah, 
use this one. We'll hold it. Nothing. All right, when it happens, we sand. Nice roughed up surface. Tends to glue way better to another nice roughed up surface. As soon as this is done, there's only two pieces left to glue on. Well, four pieces. We got the handles. And I know the cleaning rod isn't in the equation yet because my printer did not like printing it. So I'm doing it again. We just let it sit, stop messing with it. Although since we're upside down, the end of the site does get lined up upside down. So we can just put that on there. Hopefully, not glue it to the table. Now we just let it be. And the last bit to get glued on, oh, are these two pieces. That goes right there. Now there's enough flex in this that uh, the pin should fit no problem, but I'm going to put it in first. And then we'll clamp it. guessing is the safety is the last piece. This is supposed to be much more flush than it is, so we're not quite overlapping how I want to be, but it's fine. I'll live with that. Now let everything cure. Tomorrow we're going to come in with the glazing putty, cover the whole damn thing. Everything is at time to cure overnight. We now move on to filling in all these lines. If I was doing something large and smooth, like a bucket, I would use Bonto. It's easy, it's fast, it covers large areas. But this is small and fiddly. So I'm going to use glazing putty. I absolutely love glazing putty. It's my first step when it comes to, to part finishing. I don't bother with sanding anymore. The only reason I sand is so the glue adheres a bit better. But for the most part, no. And this stuff is awesome. All you do, put it on. Light, thin layer. Make sure you push it as smooth as you can. And that's it. We're going to give it a light sanding when we're done. And uh, might do a second coat, might not. We'll wait and see. So what we want to do is everywhere that's exposed needs a glazing putty. I'm not going to worry about here because this gets covered with uh, the scales. Other than that, we just apply a lot of glazing putty.
there it is. Now we're gonna let this cure for a couple hours. We're probably gonna take it inside. It's a little warmer in there. And uh, let it do its thing. And we'll come back, lightly sand it, and then see where we're at. So now we're just gonna give it a light sanding. I'm using a 120. Again, we're just smoothing everything out to see where we're at. We'll probably have to do a second coat of glazing putty. Well, let's see. So it looks good, but we are absolutely gonna need a second coat. So I'm gonna do a light sanding and then put another coat on. The second coat, same as the first coat. We're just filling in these spots. I can keep sanding, I'm doing it again and again and again. I think we're to the stage where we're going to prime it and I'm again using sandable primer. Let me show you what I got. It is a black Rust-Oleum primer. Just sandable, fast drying. I'm gonna do a coat on this and show you what that looks like. So this is where we're at. This thing looks fantastic. I'm very, very happy with it. We're gonna use graphite powder, some garbage clear, and some chip brushes to turn this into a very fantastic weathered plaster. I'm gonna bring you in, do more of a bird's eye view so you can see what I'm doing, all right? I don't like normally spraying where I'm working, just, but for you to be able to see what we're doing, I kinda have to. So I'm gonna spray the barrel first, that's my area that I'm focusing the most on. Luckily, this spray paint is garbage, takes forever to cure, so we can use that to our advantage. As I just dump graphite powder everywhere. So what I'm doing is I'm quickly brushing while the paint is still wet. So if I see any shiny, I know the uh, graphite hasn't stuck. And I can just dump more there. This is one of those faster is better. I'm holding it by the tip because the, uh, the muzzle here is silver. This brush is going to be absolutely destroyed when we're done. All right, now that we're done, I'll set this down, clean all my mess up here. We're gonna zoom back and I'm gonna explain exactly what just happened. All right, we're gonna go over materials real quick. This General's graphite powder. It's just a tube of graphite powder. Doesn't matter what kind, doesn't matter. This is Rust-Oleum two times ultra cover, ultra cover clear gloss. It is garbage. It takes forever to dry. 
and it's not that good. But what it does do is it bonds to primer real well. So we have the thing fully primed. Oh, and this is just a, a, a drywall drip tray. Trip. A drywall drip tray. That's just to catch it. Any, any receptacle. Spray the entire thing in clear, right? The clear bonds to the primer. We put the graphite powder on that, the graphite powder bonds to the clear. When the clear fully cures, suddenly we have a prop that's covered in graphite powder. When everything cures and we clean all of it off, and that's going to act kind of like um, cold casting for, for resin. It's going to bond at the surface level and it's not going to rub off, right? Um, rub and buff is fantastic, but it's a wax. And when you put it on a prop, it looks fantastic, but whenever it touches anything else, a little bit of that wax residue comes off, right? Same thing if you do graphite powder at the end of the process. If you paint it, you make it happy, then you put the graphite powder on to give it that metallic shine. It'll work, but the graphite powder is not going to be fully bonded because there's nothing for it to bond to. It's just a powder on top. It's going to rub off sooner or later. This way causes the graphite powder to bond to the clear, right? And we're just going to buff it. And then you have a very, very, very believable metal looking blaster, right? We're going to go over the whole thing with a bit of a silver dry brushing here and there. And then the, the, the um, nose cone is going to be completely silver. But suddenly it's an extremely believable prop. Put our little clean out tool in. And the metallic from the um, graphite powder lends to the slight metallic from my filament, and that's a very believable brass. So all in all, it's, it's the way I prefer to use graphite powder. Because I can just keep buffing this to an, it's, it's, a, it's metal, it looks metal, right? It covers up a little bit of my uh, sloppy sanding. And I'm not gonna be shy about that. I got sloppy sanding. Um, I did this for the Solo Blaster. If you haven't seen that video, you should. But since it was just on a barrel, it's hard to see everything. But on here, you can see how that catches the light and it's a way more believable prop. Once we get all of the excess brushed off, this thing is just gonna gleam like metal, right? It's gonna have this fantastic finish and then it's... I've used this on most of the guns I've done and I absolutely love it. Had I done it on a light gray instead of a black, it would have been a much lighter silver. But I, I like the Mandalorian having a darker gun because it looks like that in the show. It has a, a, a gun metal, an aged gun metal look to it, which is why I absolutely love this process. But at this point, the more I buff it, the more it's going to look like metal. The shinier that metal is going to appear. And it's going to catch the light in such a way that it looks, for all intents and purposes, metal. Which is exactly what we want. Lots of dust. There's a lot of dust in this. Keep in mind, this is graphite powder. You don't want to be breathing this in. I absolutely should be wearing a mask or a respirator, but I am an idiot. Don't be like me. Don't talk to cameras while you're dealing with dangerous 
dangerous substances. Oh, that's so nice. The finer of the graphite powder you can get, the smoother this um, process looks. So if you want kind of a chunky look, get more clumped together graphite powder. Sounds weird, but you know, it's just the way it works. That looks so good. That looks so good. I am so happy with that. And we're not even done yet. This is just the uh, graphite powder stage. We're gonna go over in a dry brush and silver, probably along a couple edges. And then this muzzle is silver. I'm gonna double check all of my references before I, I go painting but I believe that muzzle is almost completely silver. So, I'm gonna keep messing with this. We're gonna let it cure. While we're doing that, I'm gonna uh, see what we need to do to do the silver, and I'm going to take care of the wood scales. Wood, it's the same process. I'm just doing it with uh, the, the handles. This is probably gonna get sanded a bit, so I have a raw plastic to, to glue to, but we're getting there. So, this is just testers metallic silver. I'm gonna start by painting the uh, flash here. I don't think it's a flash. So I'm not putting a clear over any of this because that will absolutely matte the uh, graphite powder. Nice dry brush. Just gonna hit a couple of spots like these bolts. I want the bolts to look a little different than everything else. Just adds a super amount of depth. Between the silver and uh, the graphite powder, this is going to absolutely read as metal, which is what we're going for. Just the high spots. Spots that would have more wear than anything else. I'm really happy with how this gun looks so far. It doesn't even have handles yet. Man, look at that. That is fantastic. for this side. Don't overdo it. I think I'm going to do a little more on the second sight. Just a little slight difference there. That side's done. Didn't take very long. This side's a little more in depth because there's a couple more pieces. Right, we're going to lighten this button. A couple of these knobs. Don't rush through this process. This is this is the, the fun part. This is the part that makes everything suddenly real. I'm going a little faster than I normally should. I normally do, but that's what happens when you got people watching you. 
gloss over all the important stuff. Just so you can go, look at how pretty that is. It is a pretty gun too. That might be it. So, here's this side. I really like how that looks. This is so cool looking. Uh, let's leave it for a bit. Put our stuff away. And paint some scales. Are they called scales on a gun? I think they're still called scales on a gun. For the handles, I'm going to use acrylic and then clear coat the whole thing. Well, clear coat the acrylic because most wood has a varnish on it. And that's a good way to emulate it. So, as soon as they're dried from primer, I'll bring them over here, do a quick wood grain, hit them with some clear, slap them on, and we'll be done. I can put this piece in now. All right, see you in a minute. So the handles are still a little tacky. They're not quite there, which is what I want. And with a nice um, auburn, I wanted a reddish brown. I think it'll look nice. These are just brown enamel, nothing, nothing special. And I'm just gonna quickly stripe in the direction of the grain. I try to pull some of it off as I go. We'll give it a slight green texture. I'm not going for a super photorealistic green. I don't care. The key to this is just layers. Kind of looks like Chef Polo. Vary the paint you're using, vary the colors you're using. The more variations and striations you get, the more grain like it's going to look. This was ultimately that's what we're going for, right? It may look like it was made out of wood. Well, these are thin enough, I probably could. I could do this for hours. Absolutely love painting. Something I don't get to do as often as I, I, I really want. I should be giving it way more time in between these coats, but I'm not.
come back to the enamel. I need a tone that's in between this and the very dark. I don't know if I have one, I might have to mix it. Don't be afraid to experiment with your paints. Have fun. If you don't like something, just repaint it. This one might be out. Nice streaky wood, I like that. Alright, we're gonna give that at least an hour to dry. Now we're gonna hit it with some clear, put everything together. Should be about done. So I'll see you in a little bit. So after I painted the handle, so I let it dry, I put a couple coats of clear on it, went with automotive clear, because it's what I use when I actually want clear. And they look pretty good. I'm super happy with the whole gun. It turned out really nice. I mean, it looks fantastic. I'm very, very happy with it. It's just a 3D print. We went over it with the glazing putty, sanding. Um, the biggest key here, a lot of people go, these are this is the order you do things in right you you start with the print then you sand and then you bondo then you don't be afraid to go and 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 prime something and go oh i don't like that and then go over it again with with glazing putty that's that's absolutely fine don't don't let people go if you don't go the process do it your way um figure out what works best for you i'm very happy with din jaren's blaster this thing looks amazing. Um, it's the second time I've done it. The first one looks good. But to be honest, I like this one much better. It's a bit light, but to 3D printed prop, it's going to be a bit light. Um, it looks fantastic. It's easy to do. You should try it. Go find your way in the world. Do it your way. Because that is the way. Find your own moral code. Find your own process. Enjoy the trip. And, uh, oh, like and subscribe so I can see you next time. That is the way.